Please welcome a true Canadian hero, Colonel Chris Hatfield. Wow. What? Oh my gosh! Holy crap! The first Canadian astronaut to walk in space. Space! <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. So I'm a pretty big Colonel Hatfield fan. Oh my God. This man is the Canadian icon of space and science. He's like a spokesperson for everything I love. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> During his illustrious career, Colonel Hatfield orbited the planet thousands of times, spending a total of 166 days in space. Wow. That's a lot of time without a home cooked meal. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel. Could you tell us some of your favorite foods whilst you were in space? <laughs> no, no, nobody, nobody goes to space for the food, I'm afraid. <laughs> but what did Colonel Hatfield eat? <laughs> to find out, you have to lift the mystery box in front of you. Home cooks, on T minus three seconds, lift your boxes. Three, two, one, lift off. He's tried everything. <laughs> in front of you are a selection of foods that were available to Colonel Hadfield during his missions in space. Dried fruit and nuts, freeze-dried vegetables, candied salmon, and freeze-dried beef. I've never cooked with space food, but I'm pretty sure that most of the other home cooks haven't either. This is gonna be a little more difficult to elevate. I'm looking forward to seeing what we're all uh, gonna pull off. Tonight, you will have just 45 minutes to prepare a gourmet meal using the ingredients in front of you and the staple pantry at your stations. These ingredients are probably not gonna taste very good, so it's up to me to make sure that I impart flavor in everything. At the end of the cook, Colonel Hatfield and the three of us will taste the top three dishes. The home cook that produces the winning dish will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Are you ready to reach for the stars? Yes, Chef! Your time starts. Now. A uh, little space odyssey, ground control. <laughs> I am so excited today. I want to win because I want Colonel Hadfield to think I'm good enough to win, and I'm so excited, and I need to win. <laughs> These strawberries are just like little dust powders. So the first thing you have to do to reactivate some of these ingredients is to add some moisture to it. OK, chicken. Work your magic. Whether that is water, whether that is a little chicken stock, whether that's some white wine. On board the spaceship, there's this needle that sticks out of the wall. And you take your package and you slide it over the needle, and then you turn for the amount of water you want to put into it. And then you push either a lukewarm button or a hot button. That's about the best you can do as a space chef. Oh my goodness, this is a bit never working. I've never cooked with many of these ingredients before. I actually really enjoy this challenge. It's weird, but it's interesting. It's out of this world today. I'm amazed. The boring, repetitive way we just reheated those foodstuffs on orbit compared to what they have done. Cool up tote, deep fried ravioli. It's really impressive. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. up. Woo. Veronica. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is a corn and potato-based chicken congee. I also made a Japanese omelet with the dehydrated broccoli and carrots, as well as a fish floss crumble. I really want to be sure and get everything on the spoon here. I don't want to miss one thing. That's a wonderful mixture of everything. It immediately gives you a sense of being back on Earth, a sense of home. Thank you, Colonel. It was an honor cooking for you today. Thank you. Kanji is the ultimate Chinese comfort food. This dish does it for me. The meat is perfectly cooked, very moist. I love the corn. After 166 days in space, I would love to come home to one of these. Thank you, Chef. The last dish we'd like to taste is sweet and whimsical. I think I've executed a perfect dish. It's quite innovative, and it tastes really great. Congratulations go to... I have heard Colonel Hadfield's lectures. I've read his book. I've seen him in concert. I want to hear my name so badly.
Mary. Yeah, graduate. Oh I'm so excited. Careful on the stairs. Okay. This is a strawberry raspberry creme brulee, but in a pie shell. So you can eat the whole thing. Even with dehydrated ingredients, you've been able to make the dish look spectacular. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful. The creme brulee portion is very, very light and creamy, but you're able to get the beautiful flavor of those strawberries in there. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> mm, that is unbelievably delicious. <laughs> no one would be able to connect that box of what looked like throwaway food <laughs> into this very rich and delicious dessert you just made. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a super pleasure. Thank you. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. Everything in front of you comes with a small environmental footprint, and they're all sustainable. Yellow dragon fruit, nopales, beet greens, prickly pears, pumpkin flowers, watercress, okra, black salsify, enoki mushrooms, mung bean noodles, wild rice, walnuts, squab, and farmed salmon fillets from IKEA's Sodapur collection of certified sustainable seafood. Considering how overtaxed our planet has become, that is the future of food. More and more environmentally aware chefs are choosing to plan menus around ingredients like these. Our friends at IKEA are dedicated to sustainability and believe that the kitchen is a place where small actions like meal planning and meatless Mondays can make a massive difference for the planet. There's just one more ingredient on your station, a mini mystery box for you to open. One, two, three, open. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Nothing says the future food like crickets. What? on earth am I gonna do with this? I've caught some as a kid, but I've never eaten one in my life. They're rich in protein, healthy fats, minerals, and fiber. Plus, they're everywhere. Forward-thinking chefs across the globe have been finding interesting ways to use them in their dishes. And tonight, you also have that option. We want you to use as many of those sustainable ingredients as possible. But if being a good person is not enough motivation for you, you also get a major advantage in next week's challenge. You will have one hour to prepare as a dish that wows us. In addition to what you have at your station, in the pantry you'll have access to a variety of sustainable and locally sourced ingredients. Are you ready to leap into the future? Yes, yes chef! chef. And your time starts now! I have lots of mushrooms today. Today, I'm going to focus on a savory dish. Oh, these are gorgeous. My goodness. I need to show the judges that I'm just as good of a cook as I am with desserts. I'm not throwing much in my basket in the pantry. I'm gonna use as many of those mystery box ingredients as possible. No, I'll do Lincoln Berry. I actually like mystery box challenges, the fact that they limit the ingredients that I can use. Sometimes I get too crazy when you give me all the ingredients. All of these ingredients are so interesting. These are not ingredients you're gonna find in most people's grocery carts. These are a little bit unusual, and they do take a tremendous amount of skill and understanding in order to master them. And it takes a very important word, creativity. Very interesting. I don't even know if you can eat it. I don't even know like what half these ingredients are. Okay, so maybe we're gonna scratch that idea. Shaking. In this kitchen, there's so many things happening at once. If you lose focus just for a second, something can go wrong. And my beet balsamic reduction got overcooked. So I need to do it again. 
add a bit of flavor to my dish. I taste the fish cake and I really love it. It has a ton of flavor in there. The challenging thing with fish cakes is plating them. Plating is not my strength, so I don't know where to even start. I'm looking at my squab. I cut into it. Perfect. Two minutes! You have two more minutes left. I'm just taking a minute to collect myself and making sure that everything that I made for this dish ends up on the plate. I'm looking down at my dish, and I feel like I'm still missing something, but that could be me overthinking it. I feel like I'm missing something. 30 seconds! Last 30 seconds! Come on, get up! Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! There's flavor, there's texture. The plate looks beautiful in my opinion. I'm really happy with it. I think I've done enough to stay in the competition, but I don't know if I've done enough to win this one. Jeremy? You're up first. It's so important to cook with your heart in this competition, and my heart went into this. I hope the judges see that. So I made a play on a Filipino classic. It's called Sotanghon. Traditionally, it's made with chicken, and today I used the squab. I also used mung bean and a cricket squab skin chicharron on top of the noodles, and also the enoki mushrooms. You really used a lot of those sustainable ingredients. I like the way it looks. The only thing I would have done differently here is I would have sliced the squab and placed it on top of the noodles because right now it's drowning in a hot stock and you can see that it's overcooking. Yeah. Wow. It's another knockout from you. I love the fact that the squab is only seasoned with salt because it allows the other flavors to really shine. The noodles, perfectly cooked. The broth, so many layers in it. Delicious, thank you. Thank you, chef. Noodle soup is the ultimate comfort food. 100%. Mm -hmm. Do you think I'm gonna get that ultimate comfort? I hope so, chef. Okay. Oh, I would say more than pleasantly surprised. I like it because it's very clean, and using the pressure cooker was a fantastic idea. You're able to extract all that flavor. Overall, I like the effort. This is the food for the future, and in your future is bright. Thank you, Chef. I feel so good right now. I got to stick to my roots, and they loved the flavors. I'm pretty proud right now. Christopher, you're up next. I was inspired by the cricket. The puree on the bottom is a spring onion and pea puree. On top, you have a medley of mushrooms. We have braised morels, confit chanterelles, and fried enoki. Great plating. Thank you, chef. It's playful, but it also is reminiscent of your last dessert presentation. The flavors are very bold. The wonderful savory pea, the little spring onion. There is something in there that has a real umami hit to it. It might be the morel soil. Ah, okay. And how did you make that? Olive oil, morels, flour, and ground cricket to bring some nuttiness. It is a beautiful presented dish, lots of great flavors, incredible technique. And I hope that you are able to continue to create exciting food like this for us on an ongoing basis. Thank you, Chef. Oh my God, I've never cooked with coffee before. Uh, All right. With a small infant daughter, I have a very intimate relationship with coffee. My mind is racing to figure out what am I gonna do? For this first mystery box, you're gonna have to think outside the mug. I want you to look under that hill of beans to find out how you have to prepare your dish. Oh my God. This says savory, and my heart sinks and drops. The recipes that were going through my mind were only dessert recipes. I'm so happy I don't see the word savory. Personally, I wouldn't want coffee in savory food. 
As you can see, half of you will be going sweet, while the rest of you will be going savory. Melissa, will you be preparing a sweet or a savory coffee dish? I will be preparing a sweet dish. How do you feel about that? I'm more of a savory girl, so this is gonna be a challenge for me. Kagan, did you get what you wanted today? I did indeed, I got savory and I got coffee. I could use a little more coffee. So you're feeling confident? I'm feeling very confident, Chef. I have a feeling confidence isn't an issue with you. <laughs> I have a feeling that you're right, Chef. The home cook with the best dish will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Cooks, you have 60 minutes to pour yourself into this mystery box challenge. Now, everything you need to succeed is in this kitchen. The rest is up to you. Are you ready to impress us? Yes, yes sir. The time starts now. Cornstarch, anyone yeah. see cornstarch? Jonathan? Yeah. Are these ghost peppers? No, habaneros. Okay. It's a mystery box, nobody's going home, but I want the advantage because I want the other home cooks to know what they're dealing with. There's nothing like winning the first challenge and I'm gonna pull it off. It would be pretty cool to get the advantage, just win the first mystery box. Coffee is one of the most exciting and diverse ingredients to work with. You can actually use it as a flavoring agent, almost like a spice. I'm doing spiced chicken with bourbon coffee sauce, and then I'm gonna do some coffee glazed carrots. Oh, yeah, baby, that's good. Oh my god, my plating looks awful. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> the judges have been observing and tasting throughout the challenge. Now, they take one last look before choosing the three most promising dishes. The winner of this mystery box will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Top 12, they say you will always remember your first mystery box. And by they, I mean we. All we need to know about how you work under pressure is right there on your plate. The first dish we'd like to call up was made by a home cook who found an ingenious way to infuse coffee into every single element on their plate. That plate belongs to... Kagan. Bring your dish up to the front, Kagan. Oh, God. I mean, the first challenge, and I'm going up, and the judges are going to taste my food. Like, what? I've got a coffee-crusted steak, pureed celery coffee, and a little uh, condensed milk. Kagan, how do you think you made out? I think it's one of the nicer plates I've ever plated. Well, so do we. That's why you're here. What cook were you going for here? I was going for a medium rare. This is a little closer to medium, I think, but I, I believe it's gonna be a nice cook. Let's see if you hit the target. <sighs> That's beautiful. This makes me really happy. This makes me really happy. More importantly though, how does it taste? Those flavors work so well together. The smoked Jerusalem artichoke, the seasoning on the beef, competition has begun. Kagan! The dry rub, tell me what's in there. You've got coffee, we've got star anise, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, fennel. Let me try that. What I'm seeing here is genius. I mean, you have quite a invasive spice on the steak, but you know something? That puree with the condensed milk neutralizes it. I would be very proud of that being your first mystery box. I feel like the happiest person alive. Chef Alvin called me a genius. Only my mom does that. The next home cook that we'd like to call up took an ambitious suite that required a lot of skill. And we can't wait to see if it paid off. Becky. really get excited about things, but I'm shaking on the inside. It's coffee and dark chocolate eclairs. The recipe you used was right off the top of your head. 
Yeah. For a classic choux pastry, something that pastry chefs work relentlessly at to perfect for years. Yeah, I just did it by eye. That's pretty impressive, I would say. Let's take one of these, open it up, and see how it looks from the inside. Look at that. Pretty full in there. The pastry cream is incredibly soft. And you have a good balance of coffee in there. And that dark, bitter chocolate works really, really well with it. I think you could have cooked the choux pastry buns a little longer. Yeah. But it is very good. Which is why I had to have a second bite. Let's go. Yes. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> oh. Look familiar? <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. What you see before you is one of the worst dishes you've ever cooked in this kitchen. Yep. For some of you, it's what sent you home. For others, it was a big misstep along your journey. We want you to take your key ingredients and turn them into a culinary triumph. In other words, this time it better be good. <laughs> chef. Yes, Chef. The winner of this mystery box will earn a big advantage in next week's challenge. But when we said the expectations would be higher this season, we weren't kidding. Because at the end of this mystery box, at least one of you will be eliminated. Oh my god. Ooh. Yikes. <sighs> you have one hour to reinvent a past mistake. And your time starts now! Let's go, let's go. Let's get it. Woo, let's do this, guys. Go, 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 go. challenge is to recreate my original pina colada dish that sent me home on season three. Seeing that melted dessert <laughs> is like a nightmare vacation. The only problem is is that you can't serve a dish like this. I've worked in a lot of restaurants now. I ended up being an executive chef at a restaurant in downtown Calgary for just about a year. Then I started April Lee Baker custom catering and private chef. That drive to win and my confidence is just there. So this time, I'm going to make a pina colada mousse and flip it over its head by putting a pineapple rum curd inside of it. I want to show the judges that they made a good decision to bring me back. It's amazing to be back in the kitchen, isn't it? It sure is. And it's always nicer to be in a kitchen where you've got some familiar faces. It feels great. Like, my adrenaline is going crazy right now. All right, we're looking good here. I know exactly what I want to do, and I, I hope I can get there. I'm seeing massive, fully constructed dishes around me, but mine is one egg. In season two, we had to do three applications of an egg, and my soft poach was over. There's some runniness, but not enough. It's the thing that kicked me out of the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Today, I'm making shakshuka. It's basically eggs dropped into tomato sauce. It's very, very important for me to cook that egg properly, or all of this is worth nothing. Ah! It looks perfect. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I've got chicken cooking in the oven. Oh, it's in the oven till the last minute. I've got a million elements. I have to dig deep and hustle, hustle, hustle. One minute! Let's Come go, on, let's go! go. Okay, Get it on the Final plate. 60 seconds, this is it! This is amazing. Look at the energy in this kitchen right I now. I am going to be loving to taste a lot of these dishes. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! Hands up! <laughs> Oh, that last one went long. <laughs> that was an intense cook. I can't believe I actually pulled out three types of dim sum in one hour. This is a really good first cook. Uh, I'm happy with the presentation. Everything's clean. It's exactly what I wanted. I ran into some problems. My mousse didn't set, but uh, feeling pretty crappy. <laughs> 
Andy, please bring up your dish. All that's going through my head is, Andy, did you overcook that lobster? Did you? So today I made a lobster and smoked oyster chowder with a buttermilk biscuit. That certainly is a buttermilk biscuit. <laughs> it's huge. The presentation of the dish, great quantity of lobster in there, absolutely exquisite. Look at that, dripping with all that goodness. <laughs> The lobster is spot on. This has great sophistication, great flavors, great balance. It really is a dish that I'd expect to eat at a restaurant. Well, thank you, chef. Well done, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, front. It's a monkfish sinigang. On the bottom is a tamarind and balsamic glaze and some watermelon radish for garnish. Amazing presentation. Thank you, Chef. I can't wait to sink my teeth in this. Everything is there. You got the fruitiness coming from the tamarind and the extra layer of flavor coming from the balsamic. Now, the monkfish is a poor man's lobster. Man's lobster. Okay? And I can tell you, this is a rich man's dish. Yes. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Here you have tomatoes, Brussels sprouts, eggplant, and patty pan squash, a mixture of four fruits and greens. You also have an assortment of cheeses, sausage, and two different types of delicious sweet clams. Your job is to take these ingredients and make an appetizer for a classic Italian restaurant. I like this. When I go out to eat, I only order appetizers. And your dishes better be restaurant quality, because the winner of this mystery box challenge is going to see their winning appetizer featured on the menu of Jamie Oliver's restaurant, Jamie's Italian. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. Hands up, home cooks. Who has been influenced by Jamie Oliver? Wow. I grew up watching Jamie Oliver on TV. It was one of his shows that first got me into cooking. The most inspiring thing about Jamie Oliver for me is the fact that he wants to actually change the world and change the way we see food. Are you ready to earn a spot on Jamie Oliver's menu? Yes, yes chef. chef! Your time starts! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Come on. Don't start yet. No idea what's going on at this point. This is weird. We need to be sure that the winning dish is exactly what Jamie Oliver's looking for. Please help us welcome internationally renowned chef. Oh my God. Jamie Oliver. Hey guys. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Jamie Oliver, he's right here and he's in front of me. This is so cool. This is so exciting. It's so nice to meet you. <sighs> Jamie, with your restaurants opening all across Canada, your new series on Gusto, and everything else you've got going on, you're a very busy man. I wouldn't have missed this for the world. I can't wait to see what you're going to do for my restaurant. This is Jamie Oliver. If I'm going to impress anybody in this industry, I want it to be this guy. I have to win this. You have just 45 minutes to prepare a world-class appetizer using these spectacular ingredients. Okay. Home cooks! Are you ready to make Jamie proud? Yes, yes chef. chef! Jamie, would you like to do the honors? I would love to. Guys, your time starts now! Woo! <laughs> Don't take all of it! I'm trying not to. So, Jamie, tell us your thinking behind these ingredients. Obviously, we're celebrating the Italian and the Mediterranean kitchen. Stinging nettles, careful, guys. We've got those bitter veggies, you know, the chicories, the radicchios. These all have bitter notes that will require some balancing of acidity right. or, or sweetness. I need some pecorino, please. We've got some nice, big, spicy, smoky flavors with the andouille, clams and razor clams. I love, every chef loves yeah. those. There's so much opportunity in that box. There's really no excuses. No, there's a lot of options out there. 
I love this so bad. It's so nerve wracking that Jamie Oliver is here watching me cook. Cooking for my for your idols, pretty terrifying. I'm shaking. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Woo! Woo! All four judges have been observing throughout the challenge. They now take one final look before selecting the three most promising contenders for a spot on the menu at Jamie's Italian. The first dish we're calling up was made by a home cook who grabbed a lot of ingredients and found an enticing way of bringing them all together. Please bring up your dish. Barry. Wow. Good job, Barry. Jamie Oliver wants to taste my dish. It sounds trite to say that it's awesome, but it's awesome. <laughs> I've got manila clams braised with andouille sausage and pan crisp greens. Here we go, bro. You look surprised when, uh, when we called you out there. It's my first time being called up. Oh, really? Yes. Delicious. <laughs> good flavors, good seasoning. I like the char on the greens here. The clams are not overcooked. I think you've done a great job. Thank you. But what I would do here is I would try and amplify that natural broth that comes out of the clam. I'd probably go in a bowl and keep it hot and steamy. But I think all around it's celebrating loads of elements there that are delicious. Well done, Barry. Well Thank done. Thank you. You cook the clam with respect. It's still tender and moist and deliciously sweet. The andouille sausage starts to come through, so you get that wonderful smokiness to it. It's a dish that is definitely restaurant worthy. Thank you, chef. Good job, Barry. I have finally shown the judges the level to which I can cook. The next home cook we like to call up, deliver a beautiful concept. Not too simple, not too complicated, but just right. Please bring up your dish. Trevor. Yes. Yes. Win or lose, this is an achievement on its own. This is a dream come true. What you have in front of you today is a warm fall vegetable salad with a roasted garlic lemon aioli, and then some toasted squash seeds and some pecorino cheese. Let's get in there. Plating's very nice. What do you do for a living? I'm a plumber gas fitter chef. Your pipe work must be beautiful. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you. You know, here's the thing. Vegetables are always secondary in a lot of restaurants. And what you've done here is you've made them numero uno. Seasoning very nice and helped along with that pecorino. Very good dish. Thank you. It means a lot, chef. Oh, it's a bunch of root vegetables. <laughs> That's right, root vegetables. There's parsnip, beets, ginger, sweet potato. Jerusalem artichokes, celery root, turmeric, lotus root. Nothing is more literally down to earth than these hidden gems. You can do so many different things with root vegetables. Do I do Asian or Mediterranean? Immediately my mind just starts racing. For this first mystery box, we want you to use these root vegetables to tell us something about your roots. I have no idea what I'm gonna make with this. I'm Italian, we don't eat root vegetables. Being Portuguese, root vegetables are something that I use all the time. I'm ready to go. We want to see dishes that demonstrate skill, taste, creativity, and presentation. For this next challenge, you'll have full access to the MasterChef Canada Pantry. You'll have 60 minutes to create a stunning dish. The home cook with the best dish will get a huge advantage in the upcoming Elimination Challenge. Are you ready to dig deep? Yes, yes Chef! Yes! Your time starts now! Go, go, go. Ready? Ooh. All right. This pantry, it's amazing. You're looking around and it's just a wide variety of everything you could ever dream of. Bacon, I'm looking for bacon. Does anybody know where the onion is? Potatoes, parsnip. Let's go, guys. 
Go, 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 go. It's heavy. Come behind you, Jenny. This first challenge is important to me because I wanted to set myself apart from the other cooks. These other 11 people are damn good at what they do, but I just need to do it better. Root vegetable is one of the most common ingredients used in a lot of culture. It is comfort food to almost everyone in this world. Root vegetables, they're actually like really versatile and also very forgiving, which is like everything I like in a food or person, basically. Michael, what would you do? I'm thinking totally vegetarian and almost make a meal feuille of these root vegetables. I tell you, sometimes these root vegetables can be very bland. So I would take meat and make a stew. So all that meat flavor will go into that root vegetable, making it more exciting. I would actually make a multi-layered soup using all root vegetables. Three very different options. <laughs> you know what, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm making spicy Cajun puree with garlicky mussels. I'm making a cod dish from Newfoundland, I'm making the root vegetable to stir. I'm doing a classic French pump puree. Root veggies is just a part of my culture in Quebec. We're having ourselves some hash. Making rum mash sweet potatoes and roasted root vegetable hash with sausage. <laughs> I'm doing a dish that's uh, near and dear to me. My uh, daughter calls it pink soup. I'm doing uh, Ukrainian borscht. My family is a big Ukrainian family. Growing up, I watched my mom, my grandmother cook soups and hearty meals for us, so it's kind of a collaboration between everything. Got this. Got to see the sides. I'm making a filet mignon with a celery root puree and roasted vegetables. Whoa. Okay. Are these radishes? It tastes like a radish. I don't taste. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a carrot. <laughs> it works better if you turn it on. Tony, you didn't look too happy when you saw what was inside the box. Those roots are not part of my roots. I'm making a chicken cacciatore, but I'm using uh, ginger and turmeric inside the cacciatore. Would your Italian family like this, you know, <laughs> ginger, turmeric, no, cacciatore. No, I'll be honest with you, they, they wouldn't like it. Uh, I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. Thank you very much, Chef. Uh... The first cheesecake didn't set. I'm really freaking out because I need to win. I put my offset spatula in the second cheesecake, and I'm literally holding my breath. It looks like a perfect root vegetable cheesecake. But taste is king. One minute. You have one more minute left. We're rooting for those root vegetables. Oh, oh boy. Almost done. Yeah. yeah. Uh -uh. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Great work. Well done, everyone. Throughout the challenge, the judges have been observing each home cook. Now, they're taking one last look before they select the three most promising dishes for tasting. I'm confident in what I'm doing, and I have three chances to get called. I'm hoping I'm one of them. I just want them to call my name so badly. It looks like a big pile of crapola. I don't have a chance. The first home cook that we'd like to call up put an unexpected spin on their earthy ingredients. That plate belongs to... Jennifer. Yeah! <laughs> That's the feeling. <laughs> this is turf and surf, a sweet potato puree, a beet puree, seasoned blanched vegetables. Underneath all of that, there is a rainbow trout poached in a flavored broth. This might be the first fish I've eaten where I like the scales. The fish is cooked perfectly. The root vegetables, they're definitely the star of the show. They really showcase those earthy, deep flavors. Overall, pretty amazing. Thanks. Hi there, Jennifer. Hello, Chef. 
It certainly is eye-catching. Beet is such a wonderful root vegetable to work with. What comes out is that earthy, slightly sweet flavor. And those root vegetables as part of the scales on top, maybe slightly under seasoned. Okay. But if I had to score this dish on a scale of one to 10, I'd be giving it eight and a half. So well done, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. The next home cook we'd like to call up honored their own roots by digging deep. Chrissy, please bring your dish to the front. Oh my God. I can't believe it's happening. I do have what it takes. It's a roasted root vegetable soup. And there's some sunchoke chips, a little bit of crispy pancetta for nuttiness, and pine nuts. It's very, very pretty. I just love what you did with these sunchoke chips and these herbs because it, it looks really earthy. Let's give it a try. Wow. Oh. It is so good. <laughs> it's comforting. It's got good balance of flavors. I got the sweetness from the potatoes. Fantastic job. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So, Chrissy, are you proud of the soup? I am very proud of the soup, yes. You've got the coriander seed. You've got a little bit of chili happening. Yeah. You've definitely showcased to me that you have a really great palate. Thank you. When you pureed the soup, did you add any dairy to it? Yes, I poured heavy cream in there. I would have added actually olive oil to it because that cream right now is masking oh. a lot of the big, bold flavors that you really want to achieve, yeah. right? Yeah. Other than that, it's amazing. Great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> I left my career as an airline customer service agent to come here and do MasterChef Canada, and it's completely worth it. The third and final dish turned the humble root vegetable into an undisputed star. And that dish was made by... Jenny. Yeah! Good job, Jenny. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> this is Vegetables Five Ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip, apple, and yellow beet puree. The plating is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It really is a discovery of goodies. Great silky smooth puree. The sweet potato? Clay's maple sweet potato. I guess that gets the kids to eat them, right? Yeah. I put some hot spice on it, though. They don't like that at home. But the judge does. <laughs> That's great. How did you go about treating the lotus root? I just boiled down some beets, and then I pickled it just in the beet juice. It could have sat in that brine just a little bit longer, just to give a bit more of an acidic edge. I agree, yeah. But it's still crispy and flavorful. Well done. Thank you, chef. Thank you.